I have been struggling for the past few years with shop vacs in my workshop, as the filters become clogged so quickly that I really could not use them for extended periods of time without continually cleaning the filter. My previous shop vacs motor burnt out after the filter became clogged while I was planing some boards. After doing some research, it looked like some kind of first stage filter option would solve the problem, so I went ahead and purchased the Dust Deputy. I purchased the DIY Dust Deputy, and the kit comes only with a plastic cyclone. When you look at the full kit which comes with hoses and the lid, it may be more cost effective to purchase that. I already had a 5 gallon bucket, but I had to come up with an option for the lid. The Cyclone came with a little manual that described how to connect everything and provides a few examples, but I turned to issue 109 of Shop Notes magazine, which details how to build a good looking cart, and since I already had a Lowe's branded shop vac, figured this would be my best solution. You will need approximately two thirds of a sheet of plywood. I cut the sheet down first with my Festool track saw, but any handheld circular saw will suffice. I then ripped and trimmed everything on my table saw. The shop notes plan is very detailed, except that not all the measurements are shown on the plan. They do provide enough measurements to work everything out, but you'll need to use the measurements they do provide to calculate the spacings and dimensions of some parts. The base is made up of two pieces. The top piece of the base contains the cutouts for the shop vac and the bucket. For cutting the inside openings, I did these with plunge cuts on the table saw. I rounded all corners as per the plan, however for the inside corners I did not have hole saws with the required diameter, so I just made do by using the closest matched hole saw that I had. I used a router and made a simple circle cutting jig to round over the outside end of the top base piece and to cut the inside hole for the bucket. I marked the pieces for the upright center piece and laminated the top and bottom pieces. I then used a flush trim router bit in my router table to match the top and bottom pieces.
The upright center component was made in a similar way by bunch cutting the straight inside cuts and by using the closest match hole saw that I had to cut the circular openings. I made the lid for the bucket out of plywood and this is a recommended solution in the little booklet that comes with the dust deputy. I used a scrap circular piece I had left over from a previous project. I trimmed it to size by using the same router circle cutting jig I made earlier. I performed this outside as the router threw a lot of dust about. I routed a 1 quarter inch inside slot for the bucket. It was a fraction out of alignment so I heated the top of the bucket to mold it into the slot. I mounted the dust deputy to the lid with some silicon sealer as suggested in the dust deputy manual and secured it with one quarter inch bolts. For the hose hanger, I made a template with the curve and then I glued successive pieces together and trimmed them using a flush trim router bit. Because of the width of the hanger, I made it in two sections which I then sandwiched together.
I made the handle using the same techniques I used on the base and center pieces by using a router to cut the arcs and the closest matching hole saw bit that I had to cut the smaller circles and inside curves. Because I did not have any hoses to make the connections to the dust deputy, I used my existing shop vac hoses and just cut and joined them to make the connections. After testing the system, I found it to work extremely well with virtually no dust reaching the vacuum. However, after using it for a while, I had to make a few changes. The first change I made was to change the inlet to the dust deputy. I noticed that the vacuum was so strong that the pipe was collapsing on the bend. The bend appeared to be a little too sharp. I replaced this section with PVC piping. I used standard 2 inch diameter PVC pipe and a heat gun to mold it so that all fittings were airtight. The second change I made was to replace the 2 inch casters I had used with 3 inch casters. The plan actually calls for 3 inch casters and these do work a lot better. I also added an electrical fitting to the cart. This is just an extension cord connected to an electrical outlet which I added to one side of the upright center section. I used one of the outlets to plug the shop back in for normal operation and I added an eye socket auto switch to the other outlet so that I can use the shop vacuum with a power tool and have it switch on automatically when I use the power tool. This is particularly useful for sanding or when using my Festool track saw. Finally, I made a cord wrap on the other side to keep the cord tidy when not in use. I hope you got some ideas for your own project and if you get an Oneida Dust Deputy then I can wholeheartedly recommend the Shop Notes Dust Deputy card. If you want more information on this project or other projects I'm working on then please check my website and as always Thanks for watching.